Hey guys, welcome back. So we just uh, did the video for uh, video editing regarding i3, i5 and i7. More on the specs um, when I start sharing the, <laughs> the results with you. Uh, if you are interested in video editing results, I will post uh, a note beneath so you can go directly to that. If you are more a gamer, then you probably want to stick with this, <laughs> with this video. Uh, or probably want to watch the both because they are interesting if you do a little bit of both. Uh, so as, as I said on the previous video and if you watched the, the other one of video editing, sorry for the, a little bit of repetition. But the thing is when I built uh, my main PC back in January uh, 2014, I get asked a lot uh, about, um, uh, about the system and uh, some people asking which CPU should I get? I do a little bit of gaming, a little bit of editing, uh, I do just gaming, I do just video editing. Uh, I get all sort of questions, so hopefully this video will help you to decide if you want an i3, an i5 or a i7, uh, depending on the uh, software that you are going to use. In this case, this video will be just for gaming. I'm not a gamer, um, I do have some games on my Origin account, uh, and a few more <laughs> on my shelf, but uh, I don't game at all. Um, but as I was doing this test for video editing, I found uh, that it could be useful to do with uh, gaming. So once again, we have an i3, i5 and i7, more on the specs um, after. I did throw my 760 on all these three systems, so I could benchmark if the CPUs were uh, especially the weaker one if it was if it was uh, being bottlenecked by of the graphic cards was bottlenecked by the CPU. Sorry about that. Uh, I also throw in 16 gigabytes of of RAM, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM on each, so we could test and see uh, the results. And actually, we have some nice results to share, uh, and I will share with you. So I will invite you to sit down and with me and watch uh, the benchmarks that I did, um, real world benchmarks and a few synthetic benchmarks so we can see how they scale uh, or not. Okay, so guys, stay tuned for uh, the more, more interesting parts of this video. Hey guys, and now that we are sitting, I can share with you the results of uh, i3, i5 and i7 for gaming. And I've got a PowerPoint presentation here just to uh, help me out to show you the, the results, um, which I named i3, vs, i5, vs, i7 as well for gaming. Uh, before I start showing what's there, I'm not a gamer. Um, you must have heard this if you are following the channel uh, you must have heard this i'm not a gamer i do like games but uh, i had to make a decision <laughs> a few years back um, and uh, nowadays i don't play uh, at all uh, i do like games but i avoid uh, making contact with them because uh, there's a high risk that <laughs> um, that I enjoy so much that I keep playing and if I play I don't have time to work and, and I have to make that uh, that option. The only games that I do play at the moment is with my kid on the Wii. Uh, we play on the living room and it's uh, fun games that we don't get uh, addicted. And um, But before we start, if you allow me, games that I enjoy always were games that we could interact with other people. Uh, online games. And I've got uh, two examples here. I've got the Battlefield 2, which was one of the first that um, I played uh, on this, well, first, but on this on this um, kind of, of game. And I also had the 2142, and later on I purchased the Battlefield 3, which I will show you the benchmark here. Um, but I, I purchased Battlefield 3 um, after I stopped playing. 
So I just purchased it because it was cheap. It was about one year or something like that on a promotion on a sale. And I got it. I've got it on my Origin account and it's there. If I want to play, <laughs> I could play later on. Probably my kid will use my uh, account and, and use it. So these are games that uh, I really enjoyed playing. I really enjoyed playing America's Army, which is uh, was, I don't know how it is right now, but it was a really great game. And we had a lot of fun, had a clan and all that things. But the really disgrace for me was, and I'm going to show you, this game over here, <laughs> World of Warcraft. So it's not an intensive um, graphics game, but I did play a lot for a few years. And I do have all, and this this is a game that I have questioned when there's a new release of, of an expansion pack. Uh, I just go to the store and buy it. No online downloads because I want to keep all uh, the boxes. So the original World of Warcraft and then Burning Crusade which <laughs> was really fun. And then the Ratch of the Lich King. And actually I stopped playing while, while this uh, expansion was uh, well, was the latest one at, at the, the, the time being. Um, Ratch of the Lich King was my last experience on World of Warcraft, but just to share with you that I still buy uh, the expansion. So when Cataclysm went off, I just went to the store and bought it. And my wife asked me, "Hey, why you are buying that? You're gonna play again?" And I said, "No, don't worry. I just want to <laughs> to have it. And if I have a chance once I'm retired, I can play the game, even if the game exists or not. I, we don't know." And then uh, Mists of Pandaria went uh, on getting some reflections here. Mists of Pandaria, and I went and got this one as well. So these are not even activated on my account, uh, on my Blizzard account. So, well, I don't know. <laughs> no. So this just to say, and sorry if I'm taking your time. This just to say. Um, I don't game, not because I, I don't like it. I, I like it a lot, but um, don't just don't have time to it. Uh, now, regarding the uh, benchmarks, let's see something that uh, really surprised me. I was expecting a little bit different results. So let's go to the screen and see what we have here. So regarding the machine specs, uh, I already covered this on the previous video about video editing. And if you are thinking about purchasing a... A machine for gaming uh, try to think if if in the near future you are trying to think of making some kind of video editing and video editing is not not just for video editors uh, and motion graphics designers I'm not a video editor but I'm a motion graphic designer it's not just for the people that makes money out of it uh, it's also for any user that makes a family slideshow with his kid going to the beach that's video editing so if you are thinking of acquiring a machine that is capable of doing that, just try to watch the video, which is on my channel as well. And if I don't forget, I'll post a note here. Sometimes I forget, sorry about that. Um, and try, after watching this video about gaming, try to watch that one about video editing and get a more closer look. Hopefully, the both videos will complement each other so you can get a right decision for your machine. So, disregarding that, let's go to the specs. i3-4340. Uh, at 3.6 with the ASUS H81M Plus and the CPU is 130 euros value. Uh, the i5 4670K 215 uh, euros value with an ASUS Z87 Pro and the i7 finally it's the 4770K uh, with the ASUS Z87 Expert and it costs a 300 uh, euros. So all of the systems have the GTX 760, which is the, the GPU that I use on my main machine. And all of them were tested with 16 gigabytes of uh, RAM. And the difference was mainly the CPU and the motherboard. And as I said on a previous video about the video editing results, uh, I could have just taken off the i3 and the i5 and sticked on my uh, main machine and just make the benchmarks there but uh, I thought of that but to be realistic and if you watched the other video I'm repeating myself but to be realistic if you are on a budget for the i3 CPU if you are pondering the i3 you're probably not gonna think about purchasing a 250 euros motherboard like I have on mine uh, on my main system so 
to keep things realistic uh, from the budget point of view and from the reality of things, um, I used this different motherboard which is more suitable for uh, the i3 and then uh, the Z87 Pro for the i5 and the Z87 Expert for the um, i7. Not that you could not swap one of these two motherboards, the latest two, uh, just because th those motherboards allow you to overclock the CPU and the CPU are K versions so you could uh, overclock them. Uh, for these tests, no over overclock were done uh, on either CPUs to keep things balanced, okay? So, having that said, hopefully I didn't forget anything. Let's go back to the screen and see what else do we have here. So, first we have the three mark score, uh, which I'll post a preview here um, of the, the, the tests. Uh, it makes three different tests and um, each one of them is more uh, more difficult uh, for the for the the whole system uh, GPU especially um, but it tests all the system and the results that we have on the i3 we've got a result of uh, 55555 <laughs> and then um, on the i5 57041 or 5741 and then on the i7 uh, 5,833 and let's go here live I've got the links here so for the i3 uh, as you can see the score didn't made anything up uh, i3 4340 gives this overall score over here um, it says that this machine is better than 57% of all results submitted to, to this benchmark of course then we've got the i5 with 5,741 uh, as you can see, all of them with GTX 760, uh, i5 4670K, and the overall score was 5741, and then the i7 with a score of 5833, also with the GTX 760. Uh, so by these results, and if we go to the graphic again, uh, on the graphic here, it, it seems a lot between uh, these results, and actually it's not. <laughs> it's a, uh, a small difference between uh, the results. We are talking about 200 over here and about roughly 100 score over here. Uh, all of them say on 3D Mark, all of them say better than 57% uh, results. So this 5,000 and something range is above um, the 50% um, of the results that this benchmark gives. Now on Unigine Valley, uh, this was a curious test. I three, as you can see on the on the on the results, uh, kicks butt to the i five and to the i seven. Uh, bear in mind that it's just 0 0.2 frames per second here uh, and 0 0.1 frames per second from the i five to i seven. Nonetheless, the i three was the one that performed better. And then the i5 surpassed the i7, and the i7 was the last one. And I was expecting the other way around. It doesn't work like this on games. Uh, at least it's what these um, tests are showing. And um, I did test more than once because I was curious and see if anything was wrong. But no, keep giving me the same result. Uh, 0.1 frame more, 0.1 frame less. But, but these uh, results were... Uh, the same. So, based on these two benchmarks, the idea that I get from these systems is uh, whether you have an i3, an i5, or an i7, the, my phone is ringing, I don't know if you can hear it, if you can, sorry about that, I will answer it later. Um, it will give me a idea that both of the, or the three CPUs will have no big impact uh, on gaming. Uh, if you have a, a decent GPU. And now let's go to the first benchmark, Battlefield 3. Uh, I played the campaign one level campaign and the same level on all the systems. And I placed 75 um, frames per second on all of them because even if even if there's a difference on frames per second, I'm not able to tell it. And I was using fraps to, to help me uh, 
seeing the, the, the frames per second, I was getting uh, peaks of 90 frames per second. Lowest was about 60 frames per second on more complex uh, scenes, explosions and bangs and booms and <laughs> things like that. But um, hey, the i3, 100 euro CPU, does the same as the i7, which is 300 euro CPU. So let's go for the next Creed 2. Same thing, no surprise here. After watching the the the, um, the the results on Battlefield Three, it didn't surprise me. Grid Two was giving me um, was giving me the same results. So seventy seven seventy peaks of eighties nineties uh, lowest sixty something. Uh, so the average was around seventy. And then I did try another game, which is actually quite different from everything and this one actually gave me six, 60 frames per second which is the FIFA 2014 I, I downloaded the demo from the origin account um, I don't own this game so but this game was curious because um, it could not go higher than the 60 frames per second uh, but that's a game limitation not the GPU itself uh, once I took took out to make that experience I took out the GTX 760 and, and worked with the igpu which in this case is the f uh, intel hd 4600 uh frames per second dropped to 30 30 something so half uh i believe that the gtx 760 for this kind of game can go higher than 60 frames per second but the game limitation is this i found another game that i also have and i tried it which is burnout paradise uh, a game of racing uh and it was giving me the same result 60 frames per second uh, and forgot to mention that all the games were maxed out on settings battlefield greed uh, fifa everything maxed out uh, full resolution full settings ultra settings or extreme settings depending on the the, the game that um, the name that the game uh, is giving me uh, so in conclusion and to wrap things up guys uh, if you are looking for a dedicated machine just for gaming uh, for these results you can see that you can save uh, money on a CPU and invest on the GPU where really things uh, matter. So the i3, the i5, the i7 will be just fine um, being the i3, the cheapest one. So that probably <laughs> is the one that uh, you would go for, especially if you are on a budget. Now, there is a thing that you might want to ponder is newer games, uh, for example, Bat Battlefield 4. Um, I read a few specs that it utilizes more than two cores. Uh, usually games uh, utilizes one, two cores maximum, uh, but newer games are starting to utilize more, uh, three, four cores. And for what I've read, if you want uh, a machine that is a bit more future-proof, uh, then you would like to go for the i5. Um, and you will be with a, uh, with a great machine and uh, with a price point which is very fair, as we saw on the benchmarks. Uh, on the other hand, if you want to uh, do some video editing, uh, some Photoshop, some photography treatment alongside of your gaming, you want an overall machine that can be able to do uh, a little bit of everything, then my, um, my opinion would be for the i5 and not the i3. I would forget the i3 over there. Uh, and if you search for the video where I did the tests on the same machines but for video editing you will see a really huge difference from the i3 to the i5 uh, not so much from the i5 to the i7 but the i3 to the i5 it's a really really huge difference and the price uh, will will be uh, compensated on performance so guys hopefully this was helpful uh, in some way for you to decide which cpu do you want to get for your next machine uh, whether if it's for gaming or if it's an all-purpose PC, which usually it is. Uh, if you do gaming, you can do Word and Excel and you know Office, things like that. You can also do uh, some video editing and photos of your family or uh, friends, doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, wrapping it up, i5 would be the ideal solution, having in mind that nowadays games will take advantage of that and i have to shut up guys thanks for watching if you liked the video and it was helpful thumbs up uh if it wasn't well <laughs> just right next to it there's a, a thumbs down button and 
Thanks for watching. My name is Roberto George and bye bye.